welcome to this powerful leadership meeting and the message is so powerful in the sense that you will learn many things to grow your christian life and to grow other people around you i want you to sit back as you listen to apostle jesua shama and if you have not subscribed to this channel do so and also share with one another because this message is loaded by god for you for this very hour God bless you as you sit back to watch it and listen to God's voice through his servant. My spirit was just fired up as I came here and I just, I just thought to bring this to challenge someone. Shake off that limitation. It's time to soar. Hallelujah. Do you know why the plane lifts? It lifts because it, if it keeps moving at that pace, it will start bouncing. The speed is too much for land. So it has to lift. Hallelujah. That when it begins to taxi to lift, there is a speed requirement that no object on land should continue. It, it, will, it will have to change phases. Hallelujah. Just like temperature. When you put ice and you set, maybe you put ice in a pot and set it on fire. There is a temperature that cannot allow it to be ice again. There is a temperature that cannot allow it to be liquid again. Is that true? Yes. Same water, but existing in different phases. The difference is the temperature. And in this case, for a plane and aircraft, the difference is the speed. That there is a speed that becomes unfair for it to remain on the ground. And that way it soars. Because that's where it belongs, at that speed. hallelujah some of you after this conference you will stand before kings and nobles it listen you will look left and right and find out that you it's almost like it's a dream you will ask yourself what am i doing here who would have believed that god will lift me that all those who knew you will say how did you get here how did god pick you from enugu to place you to sit with kings i'm saying this as a prophetic word maybe not for everyone but for someone who has the grace to believe that my god can lift men may that grace rest upon you this morning hallelujah please be seated hallelujah a journey of 12 to 13 hours can be covered in 50 minutes depending on what carries you there hallelujah so it is possible to leave me in lagos on my bed sleeping and by the time you get to abuja i'm still sleeping there and you are wondering what happened i simply had the advantage of a more superior means of transportation am i right on that yes that a journey that should take 10, 12, 13 hours. I can take that journey in 50 minutes. Not because I am better than the person who went by road or any other means. I simply had the leverage of a more superior system of transportation. This is what is happening to you this morning. That the things you are about to hear. Just imagine yourself coming out of another kind of means of transport. Into a more superior one that what you are hearing in a matter of days some of you it will so revolutionize your life in the name of jesus christ listen we rise upon the strength of the information and the revelation we have access to we do not rise just because of desire it takes more than desire to rise hallelujah the wealth of the revelation you have is what constructs your means of transportation in destiny the wealth of the revelation the abundance of the light that you have and uh, that the light you have is what you will use to construct your means of transportation if you do not have superior light you may be forced to crawl through destiny when god wants to help you he sends you light the light only comes through men so it looks like he's sending you a man but a man is only useful because of the light that they will bring are we together now 
I've had the honor and the privilege of studying very successful ministries, successful organizations, successful believers. And when I say successful people whose lives have been a very clear representation of God's intent. There are others who have given flimsy excuses as to why their spiritual lives, their finances, their organizations, and their destinies have failed to rise to her prophetic potential. You see, every time you find yourself in a limitation, there are two ways you can approach that situation. One, to give a flimsy religious excuse to console yourself and crystallize your mediocrity or take responsibility and say, I know there is a way. I may not know the way, but I will not rest till I find it. Our world is full of many believers, including Christians, who knowing that they have been limited in many, in many areas, would not take responsibility. So if the man's prayer life is down, he would downplay prayer and say prayer is not important as an excuse to remain in that state. If the man's word study life is not robust and serious, he will say it's not about revelation. We, we are masters at creating excuses in areas where we do not excel. If the man's finances is going down, he says it's all about love for Jesus and not about money. What does that mean? Are we together? If we fail to rise, we say, after all, we are all going to die. All these wise sayings that endorse mediocrity. Shake that thing off your destiny this morning in the name of Jesus and brace yourself that everything God has in store for me, my life will be a clear representation of all that Jesus died for. My life will be a clear representation of the victory that is captured in the death, burial, resurrection, ascension and exaltation of the King. And that if my life is short of any of this, then it becomes my press to see that within my lifetime, I become as clear as possible a representation of his power. Hallelujah. This is responsible Christianity. If you are broke, don't argue, don't complain. Just come to God and say, I take responsibility. There is something I have not seen. Show me the light. If your spiritual life is going down, don't give a flimsy excuse and say, after all, the most important thing is that I'm saved. No, I can step into a higher level. If your organization is failing and you're not contending for true kingdom influence, don't downplay influence because it is not captured in your life. Are we together? So this morning, I want to share with us a few things as we pray. That I thought would really help us. It's my honor to contribute as God will grant grace to our rising and excelling. Sir, I made a commitment and a covenant with God that in my life as a leader and as a man of God, that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant. It is my intent to raise people who become a holistic representation of everything that Jesus died for. That includes spiritual vibrancy a transformed people a people who excel in every area of their life and so in teaching and mentoring my people i'm very intentional i'm very methodical and i'm very insistent when i teach on finances you will think that is all that i know when i teach on consecration and spiritual life you will think i will not teach on anything else it is my desire to see that god's people be holistically built it is dangerous to be lopsided in your construction because you will be the only representation of jesus that someone may be looking at and if you are not thoroughly built you will misrepresent who jesus is a few weeks ago i taught back home trying to help us redefine that there is a kind of jesus who are selling to the nations that a whole generation is going to reject because that portrait of jesus is not the one the bible talks about we have sold a weak jesus a limited jesus a jesus who is not interested in letting men rise to positions 
of influence and nobility to live lives of dignity and honor this wrong misguided narrative is what has plunged africa as a continent and this nation where it is so you find some of the failing businesses they belong to christians and we excuse it and say after all we are soon going to go home and so it endorses carelessness mediocrity and so on and so forth but this morning i hope to challenge us in the name of jesus that there is a destiny for us in christ and god desires he did not waste these resources in our lives the word of god the blood of jesus the holy spirit god would not have granted us access to these rich resources just to live a mediocre life and when i talk about an excelling life it's important that i let you know that everything i talk about is with respect to god's expectation with respect to the revelation of jesus in and through your life hallelujah everything in your life only finds its value to the degree to which it contributes to making jesus known to your world it's important that we have that at the back of our minds praise the name of the lord second chronicles chapter 15 second chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3 i like us to read this scripture as loud as we can when it is projected ready one to read please now for a long season israel had been without the true god and without a teaching priest and without law one more time please now for a long season israel had been without a true god uh-huh ladies and gentlemen in this simple verse of scripture lies the secret to territorial decadence that every time satan wants to destroy a territory there are three things he withdraws number one the knowledge of the one true god number two he withdraws leadership teaching priests no one to guide no one to mentor no one to instruct and number three he removes laws show me a society that does not acknowledge god as their king did the bible not say blessed is the nation whose god is the lord hallelujah it says now for a long time this tragedy unfortunately happened to the nation of israel israel had been without the true god and you know jesus said this in john 17 remember and verse 3 this is life eternal that they may know ye you the one true god and jesus whom thou hast sent so back to that scripture for a long time israel was without the true god number two without a teaching priest a teaching priest what is the assignment of the teaching priest jeremiah 3 15 and i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding so that any territory that is bankrupt of a teaching priest men and women commissioned mandated by god to help guide the understanding of his people within that territory and then number three the absence of laws people just do whatever they want to do no boundaries no limits did the bible not say a man who does not have a watch a gate over his spirit is like a city without walls any business any church, any territory that experiences these threefold deficiencies will always remain a prey to Satan. The absence of the one true God, the absence of teaching priests, the absence of laws. This is true for churches, this is true for individuals, this is true for corporate organizations. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This is very important. Now, most people desire to rise. Most companies, most churches desire to rise and excel. And if you ask the average person, what is the key to a victorious Christian life? As an individual, as a ministry, they will tell you things like faith for some. Others will tell you light, understanding. Others will say anointing. Are we together? 
others will say just make sure you crush all the altars that are so pieces of truth together but did you know that for you to make progress in the spirit the first thing you need to understand is how god designed his kingdom to function you cannot be in a kingdom and not consult with the owner of the kingdom how did god design the kingdom to function how did god design victory to be administered and experienced are we together the only person who has the exclusive right to guide your excelling is god himself he designed the system he was not given he is alpha omega it is pride to try to design a great life and ignore the one him the one who brought the whole thing about most people try to build ministries through all kinds of formulas build businesses through all kinds of formulas and did you know that while they are doing all that god is by the side watching them and they ignore him or at best involve him when there is trouble and when there is a semblance of peace they say you can leave now the day i need you you will come back again but see what the bible says in the beginning god created he never said in the beginning god and man created in the beginning god alone exclusively that means for everything i desire to become obtain achieve everything i desire i must go back and consult god how did you design for men to prosper in the kingdom how did you design for territories to advance in the kingdom how did you design for individuals to be anointed in the kingdom how did you design for people to access wisdom how did you design for influence to happen in the kingdom no wonder jeremiah 6 16 says thus saith the lord he said stand in the way and find out that old path 616 jeremiah ask for the old path he says wherein is the good way you have to ask you don't assume you ask and when you find it he says walk therein and he assures you that you will find rest for your soul the bible says but they said we will not walk therein hardship has an explanation a mediocre life has an explanation a life of limitation has an explanation becoming a victim of societal and elemental forces has an explanation hallelujah are we together so we must learn to go back to god and ask him how did you create this to work how did you create business to work in Enugu in Nigeria how did you create ministry to work the rich young ruler came to Jesus and said good master what must I do to be saved very responsible gentleman he didn't say can you make me say what must I do I know there is a responsibility component to this what is my own part in it to be saved hallelujah leadership is a very important aspect of our lives for many reasons without leadership it is impossible for continuity in any life any ministry any family and so the way god designed the system is that anything god wants to last he creates a tripartite formation around it please follow closely hallelujah when god created trees you will notice that a tree can stand for hundreds of years is that true there are trees that are hundreds of years old and here was the formation there is the root is that true and then there is the vine itself is that true then the branches that bring the fruits that's how god designed it everything god wants to last he constructs this kind of system that there is something the root connects it to the earth and continues to receive nutrients are we together now yes the the vine midwives the root and then the fruit and the branches are the fruit bearing part of it so when jesus was speaking he said i am the vine he says you are the branches you see that now 
that if you will ever be fruitful you must be conscious of this formation the moment you try to become the vine you're going to get into trouble that you are the branches and that your productivity only happens with respect to how connected you are to me hallelujah are we together now so most people have failed to rise because they have failed to understand god's structure and god's pattern in ezekiel 37 when you study the bible talks about something that really happened there with prophet ezekiel the resurrection of the ones dry bones who became an exceeding great army did you notice that the first thing that happened was that the bones came together bones talk of structure life is useless flesh is useless until the bones come together remember when when joseph was about to die he said make sure when i'm dead and you are leaving this place carry my bones he was not just talking about his physical bones alone carry a pattern there was a structure something kept you in a foreign land and you still excelled he says when you are living there carry it my bones should be a memorial for you hallelujah are we still together yes this is very important so most people do not understand the power of structure and the power of leadership i will talk a bit along these lines no organization and no ministry thrives without understanding leadership now you see the way we start anything is that anything from infancy may not seem to need leadership if you are starting a business all it takes is an idea and perhaps some capital and then you start and you're doing well same thing with a church most likely the church may happen between you your wife and maybe your children and so the the necessity for leadership and the consequences of the absence of leadership may not be seen at that point hallelujah it takes time and as people and organizations evolve you now begin to see the necessity for leadership so when jesus walked upon the earth you would think that the assignment of salvation will be done by him alone even though he was the only one who was sent to die he was not sent to die and kill other people too with him are we together but when jesus walked upon the earth did you notice that for over 30 years there was no need for leadership he didn't call anybody no talk of discipleship no talk of mentorship he was building himself am i right on that but the moment the assignment began watch this now the bible tells us that when jesus was baptized he returned in the power of the spirit and the next thing that happened was that he selected a few people and the bible says he called them to be with him and then that he might send them so he calls he prays all night and then he selects a group of people 12 of them the bible listed all of them and notice i like the leadership structure of jesus just because he was there doing crusades did not mean that he forgot to build these people there were two things jesus was doing and most people focus on the miracles or do you know that a majority of what you call the gospels were discussions between him and his people are we together now that the beatitudes from matthew chapter 5 and you read down to matthew chapter 11 there about these were the lecture manuals jesus was teaching and training his people when he called on these people he would go and preach and mighty things would happen then he would return back dust himself and say gentlemen sit down and let's continue he kept building them building them and then by the time we get to acts chapter one the 12 in company with others making 120 were ready to receive of the spirit of god and to become the extensions of this gospel can i tell you as powerful as salvation is and was it would have failed without leadership the advancement of the gospel today did not just happen because jesus died and resurrected successfully i hope you know they already paid people to silence that news it took leadership in partnership with the holy spirit to prevail over the desire to silence the truth of the resurrection of jesus most people have not seen the value of leadership and so they are unable to rise 
and they're unable to excel what is leadership